Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Steve Baker. I'm a data center networking TME here at Aruba. And this video is going to be a quick start guide video which provides a product introduction to the Aruba CX 8320 switch series. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So taking a look at the A8320 switch series, this is actually a series of switches that can be deployed in the enterprise campus environment as well as data center environments. So this is really a high performance switch that supports up to 2.5 terabits of bandwidth, which with up to 1905 million packets per second. The switches all support high availability with Aruba VSX and multi-chassis link aggregation. They all support modular power supplies and fan trays. So in case one of those were to fail, the device could continue operating. All of the switches support the AOS CX operating system, which actually enables automation and programmability using RESTful APIs and Python scripts. The switches support intelligent monitoring and visibility with the Aruba CX network analytics engine. They also support one-touch deployment using the CX mobile app. And of course, complete management using the CX NetEdit app. And these switches support typical and uh, layer two, layer three features that we would expect to see at this layer in a network. So BGP, OSPF, VRF, IPv6, of course. They come in three form factors. So you can see all three form factors on the right. We have a 48 port 1 slash 10 gig SFP plus model. And we also have a 48 port 1 slash 10 gig base T model. And both of those models also include six 40 gig QSFP plus uplink ports. And then finally, we have a, a 32 port 40 gig module module which contains all QSFP plus ports. So when we're actually building out environments, especially in particular data center environments, airflow is an important issue. So when we build out our environments, we want to ensure that we are positioning the switch in the right manner so that the airflow meets the customer's demands. So we can see here in this environment on the lower left where it shows cold aisle containment. This would be an environment where the cold air is actually being sucked into the switches on the back of the switches, what we would normally call the back of the switches, and then pumped out through the switch and pumped out the front of the switch. On the right is the exact opposite, right? So this would be where air comes in through the front of the switch and the hot air is pumped out the back of the switch. So we would call that front to back airflow. So going into the 8320 details, we can see that the 8320 the 48 port SFP plus model actually can provide 720 gigabits of line rate bandwidth. It, like I mentioned, it has the 48 10 gig ports, which can operate at one gig or 10 gig. And of course it has the 640 gig uplinks. It's a standard dimensions for the switch. It's 19 inch rackable. Of course, it's got the two power supplies, which are redundant and hot swappable. And finally, we have the five fan modules, which are on the back. And these fan modules are front to back airflow. So you can actually see that with the fan modules. You see how the handles are red here. That red actually indicates that the hot air will be blowing out the back of the switch. Now, the next switch in the, in the series is the 10 gig base T switch. So pretty much the exact same thing as the SFP plus model, except now we're using 10 gig base T copper ports, which support one and 10 gig. Uh, we're looking at the same dimensions. And of course we still have the two power supplies and the five fan trays in the back of the switch. And then finally the 32 port 40 gig module. So this switch actually supports 1.2 terabits of line rate bandwidth. It's got the 32 40 gig QSFP plus ports. And of course on the back, it has the two power supplies and the fat five fan trays doing the front to back airflow like the previous two models. Zooming in a little bit closer to the 48 port SFP plus model, we can see two rows for the 48 ports of SFP plus. We can see the four, the six, sorry, 40 gig QSFP plus ports on the right. And then on the far right, we can actually see the RJ45 out-of-band management port, as well as an RJ45 serial console port. And then we have the LEDs for the system health, which can be seen on the left. And then of course we have the air inlets, which we could see on the left and the right and along the front of the switch. And then finally we have the luggage tag here, which is really handy. 
Looking at the back of the switch, we can see the two power supplies which come installed, the five fan trays, which also come installed, and of course the ground lugs uh, for grounding the switch. Looking at the 10 gig base T switch, very similar setup, except now we're using 1 slash 10 gig base T ports that go along the front of the switch. But everything else is still the same, except now we actually have a USB type B micro port here for configuration management also. And very similar on the back of the switch, the two power supplies and the five fan trays come with it. And then of course the grounding lugs. And then we have our 32 port model. So zooming in on this, you can see the 32 ports of 40 gig. We can see the RJ45 out of band and console ports on the right, as well as a USB type A port for configuration management. The luggage tag is on the right also. And of course we have the system LEDs on the left. If we look at the back of the switch, the power supplies are now actually positioned both on the left. But it's really the same setup. We have two power supplies and, of course, the five fan trays, which all come installed in the switch. So that was a quick product introduction to the 8320 switch series. I hope that was helpful. Keep your eye out for the YouTube Airheads broadcasting channel for more of these quick start videos providing more and more detailed information about these CX switches. Thank you.